Welcome to today's video, which is going to be my yearly favorites video. I am so excited because I love watching these videos because I really want to know what people's tried and true favorites of the year. I think they are so much fun to watch. This is mostly makeup. I will say I'm not including eyeshadow palettes because I'm going to do a separate video on the best eyeshadow palettes of the year. So stay tuned for that. I've been uploading six videos per week in December. So if you have missed any of those, I will link some videos in the cards and in the description box if you want to catch up. Last year, I did a separate video on the best skincare and hair care of the year. And I just didn't have time to do that. So I'm just gonna include just a few hair care and skincare products at the beginning, but the rest will be makeup. Again, the eyeshadow palette favorites will be a separate video otherwise this one would have been way 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 too long and let's just get into it let me just quick talk about the three skincare favorites I have this is not my entire skincare routine and I have so many other favorites but these are just some kind of standout products the first two are from the ordinary and I have combination skin but lately since it's been colder out I am definitely leaning towards dry this year I have loved squalene and I have repurchased this at least one time. This is the one from The Ordinary and it is absolutely great. It is supposed to be for hydration and so I use this at night after I use my retinol and other serums. I will use this and then a moisturizer on top when my skin is feeling really, really dry. And sometimes I have even mixed it in with my morning moisturizer if my skin is super dry. So squalene has been amazing for me. I have loved it. Another favorite is also from The Ordinary. This is their Hyaluronic Acid 2% plus B5. Also really, really noticed great benefits with this as far as hydration. So again, this is something I tend to layer at night. After retinol, I will use this and then a moisturizer on top. Speaking of moisturizer, I tried a lot of different moisturizers this year. I did get some in PR and I tried some amazing ones. But I've gone back to my tried and true favorite moisturizer. This is the Neutrogena Gel Cream Extra Dry with Hyaluronic Acid. And I absolutely love this. It is more of a gel-based moisturizer, but I don't know, there's just something about this that works. How I use this is I will put it on in the morning and then put my sunscreen on top and then makeup. And then in the evening, I'll do the retinol, the other serums, maybe the squalene, the hyaluronic acid serum and then this as the final step to lock it all in. And it's just a great product. I will say, I mean, this is a little expensive for drugstore. I think it's $20 and I have gone through it pretty fast in the past. It's 1.7 ounces, but I've tried so many moisturizer, drugstore and high end, and this is my number one. Alrighty, three quick hair care favorites and the rest will be makeup. Um, I have loved this hair mask. This is the, Moroccan oil, it's is really dirty because I just pulled it out of my shower. It's covered in soap scum. It is the Intense Hydrating Mask. I have incredibly dry hair and also a major dandruff problem, which is kind of a problem when you have very dark hair. Um, this is very, very moisturizing. I love this. This is something I have repurchased as well. This is a little expensive, 40 something dollars, but I only wash my hair once or twice a week. Therefore, it lasts me for quite a while. My absolute favorite shampoo is the Verb Go Shampoo. I've mentioned that before, but I still haven't repurchased it because last time I tried to buy it, it was out of stock. I still wanna buy that. I've gone through like five bottles of that stuff. And then I have two other favorites from Verb, which I do have an affiliate link with Verb, but I buy all these products myself because I just really, really love them. And it's also more of an affordable brand as far as Sephora goes. Their products are about 16 to $20 each, which I mean, compared to that Moroccan oil mask, pretty good price. I have loved the leave-in mist. Again, I have dry hair and this makes my hair feel pretty soft. I haven't even used that much of it because I only do one or two sprays and sometimes I forget to use it as well. But when I do, my hair is extra soft. And then something else that I purchased from them that I'm loving is the Sea Texture Spray. I don't like using hairspray. I don't like my hair to be crunchy, but sometimes I want it to stay in place. And so even though this is a texture spray, I kind of use it as a light hold hairspray. And it works very well because again, I'm not super into hairspray. Let's get into the makeup. I'm gonna start with what I consider the super boring categories, but these are so crucial. Um, these are just really important things in my makeup routine. First up, eye primer. I have super oily eyelids. I have to use eye primer. This is the one by Milani. Love that, only six or seven dollars. 
Also, I've been using the one from Pretty Vulgar that I got in BoxyCharm. I like that one too. It's a bit more tacky, but I wouldn't repurchase that because it's 20 something dollars. Um, brow gel. I have very unruly brows. I have to use brow gel and I don't like clear brow gel. I tried so many of those, but they always leave my brows crunchy. So recent favorite has been the e.l.f. Wow Brow and the color I have is neutral brown. I like that this is a small little brush. Most days I just use this and then today I use some brow powder and then this. So this is fantastic. It's only three or four dollars. I also love the Essence Make Me Brow, but I have finished that one. I don't have it currently. Um, mascara, I mentioned this in a recent kind of drugstore favorites video. This is the Catrice Pret A Volume and I have loved this. It's only seven or eight dollars. It is a big natural kind of bristle brush and this gives a lot of volume, which is what I look for. I'm not as into lengthening. I want volume on my lashes and I can't stand mascara that smudges or flakes on me. I've tried so many mascara, they either flake or smudge and I just, I don't like that. I feel like it just totally ruins my makeup when that happens. So that one does not do that. I've been using that for several months. And then eyeliners, Again, super boring. My favorite pencil eyeliner per version by Urban Decay. Super black. I wear this in the waterline and it stays put pretty well. And liquid eyeliner, Maybelline Line Stiletto. I've been using this for, I don't know, seven years. I cannot do a wing with anything else. I've tried, it doesn't work. So I don't bother experimenting with eyeliner. All right, let's talk about some complexion products. There are quite a few primers that I really enjoy. Um, one that I've really loved in the last several months is this one by Becca. And I always forget, yeah, this is the first light priming filter. Um, I have the other one as well, the backlight priming filter. And that one is pretty glowy. It's almost like a liquid highlighter. So I prefer that to mix in with foundation, but this is hydrating and smoothing all at once. I am definitely for the smoothing primers. I also really love the pore filling primer by CoverGirl and the original Smashbox one. As I mentioned, my skin's been more dry lately, so I need the extra hydration with this. I'm down to about here. I've been loving it, that is fantastic. That's something I've repurchased. I had a bottle of that a while back. So really, really enjoyed that. Let's talk about foundation. Now there are a lot of foundations I really, really love. Again, I have combo skin, so I want something that's not too drying, not too dewy, somewhere in the middle. That's what I love. I love the e.l.f. Flawless Satin Finish Foundation. I have finished that. The Catrice HD Liquid Cover. Estee Lauder Double Wear, Double Wear is probably still the number one best foundation I've ever tried because on me, it is not cakey and it lasts. I mean, I've worn that for 20 something hours and it still looks good. But you know, this year I haven't really needed that foundation. I haven't really gone to like special events or anything like that, but I will say it is still my number one. Two foundations I really, really love. Um, the Pretty Fresh, this is technically the ColourPop Tinted Moisturizer. I can get this to a medium coverage. I love it on its own, but what I've really done with this a lot this year is mix it in with other foundations. I was panning that Becca Ultimate Coverage Foundation, which I really disliked. It was so cakey, but mixed in with this, it made it so much nicer. And then. Also the Peach Perfect Comfort Matte Foundation. This is matte, but yeah, like the name says, it's a comfort matte. It is not too cakey or drying. This has a really good lasting power. I have really enjoyed this. I got it when it was on major clearance at Sephora earlier this year, and it's been great. I'm wearing a combo of these two today, and I've combined these together quite a bit. These are fantastic. As far as concealer, there's quite a few that I really enjoy, but I decided to just pick one for this yearly favorites video. This is something I have repurchased. This is the CoverGirl True Blend Undercover Concealer. I've talked about it a lot. Um, let's see what color I have, Light Ivory. This is absolutely fantastic. I do love Shape Tape. This is similar to that. It's slightly less coverage though. This is very, very creamy. My under eyes are incredibly dry, so I cannot wear any concealer that is drying at all. This is very creamy. I would say this is about a medium coverage. 
Lasts well throughout the day. This is great. I finished a tube of it and then I repurchased this one. So this is my second one. If you've been watching my channel, then you would definitely know this is definitely a favorite. It's really a holy grail. Favorite is putting it lightly. This is the only powder I use on my under eyes. This is the Bare Minerals Mineral Veil. This is the original Mineral Veil. They have several versions. I use the one called Original. This is absolutely amazing. It has a slight pink tint to it. This is the only powder I use on my under eyes. It keeps my concealer from creasing, but it doesn't make my under eyes look dry. So many powders I've used on my under eyes just look terrible. They look like I have major, major wrinkles and I have some lines, but it's not that bad. So this is a holy grail. I've been repurchasing this for probably eight years or more. Face powders. I feel like a lot of face powders work for me because I just need to set my foundation down because again, I have combo skin, but I'm not super oily, so I don't need like ultra mattifying powder. A lot of powders work for me, but these two are definitely favorites. The first one is only $1 and it is the AOA Studio Perfect Powder. This is a loose powder. I have the color Soft Light. They also have other shades and then they also have like one of those translucent ones which i don't love those powders they tend to leave a white cast that powder is amazing it looks so nice this is incredibly similar to that it's maybe just slightly more finely milled this is the hourglass one this is called the veil translucent setting powder this says it's translucent but it also has just like a slight yellow tint which works for my skin tone incredibly finely milled, helps my foundation last all day. These are great. But I will say as far as getting my foundation to last all day, it's really a combination of things. It's a combination of primer, the foundation, and the powder. If I were to, you know, skip the primer, it definitely would not look as good. Same, you know, if I skipped the powder, it would break down all over the place. So it's really the combo that works, but those powders are fantastic. Let's talk bronzer. I've only picked one for this video and that is the Bare Minerals Faux Tan. I have used this a ton this year and I'm wearing this today. It is a super weird looking muddy bronzer, but on the skin, it doesn't look like this. It's a very neutral in tone, but it's not too cool toned. I have yellow undertones and I just don't look good in super cool toned bronzers, I've discovered. I used to use like a super gray contour shade and then I realized that just didn't look good on my skin tone. It just did not. So I go for more neutral colors to contour and sometimes bronze as well. This, I like this for contour and bronzing. I think it is great. This was in my Podrick 100 uses. I have used this over 100 times now. It's an amazing bronzer. I really, really have loved it. I still do love my Marc Jacobs bronzers. I still think they are great. I will say last few years on my channel, I always did a recap of my yearly favorites from the year before, but I've had so many other videos to film. I didn't have time to do that. And I went back and I watched that video and I still love everything in that video anyway, even if I'm not mentioning it here. So I will link my last year's yearly favorites if you do want to see that. Some of these were in that video, some were not, but again, I looked back on it and I still love everything that I mentioned in that video. For blush, honestly, I feel like I like a lot of blushes. There's a lot of great blush out there and I really used my Project Pan blush a lot. I'm still trying to finish the very last bit of my Wet n Wild Pearlescent Pink and I'm wearing that today with a combination of this one. This I got on major sale clearance at Ulta earlier this year. It's the Physician's Formula Butter Blush. This is in the color Vintage Rouge. It's a pretty neutral blush, but it's really nice. This is a really nice finely milled formula and I've really, really enjoyed it. And then my other favorite blush for the year, I actually got in BoxyCharm earlier this year and it is this duo by Wander Beauty. It is called Bellini. This is the blush, Bellini. And then this is like a contour shade, which I don't use that much. I will say it looks super light in the pan, but when I put it on the face, it does look a bit darker than this, but it's really the blush that stands out to me. This is incredibly finely milled, but there's a bit of a sheen to it, but there's not shimmer or glitter. I don't know how they do it, but it's incredibly flattering on the skin. It looks more of like a natural glow type product, gorgeous peachy color, there it is. I mean, there's a lot of blush colors that look like this, but 
There is something really spectacular about this formula. Alrighty, we are down to highlighters and then lip products. Highlighters, again, there are so many highlighters I love. I love the Hourglass powders. I love the Anastasia Glow Kits. I love the Ofra highlighters, but I just kind of decided to just try to pick two that I really, really love. And this was a new favorite this year. I think I have finally found an affordable alternative for the Hourglass finishing powders. It's obviously not exact, but I've been using this quite a bit in place of that, and it's amazing. This is by Catrice. This is their highlighting powder in Champagne Campaign. It's only six or seven dollars. It's a little bit hard to find. I bought it on the Catrice website, and I couldn't find it at Ulta, but it's great. I mean, it's a champagne color, so not super exciting. You can build this up to be more of a highlight, but I usually use this as a finishing powder and it is absolutely beautiful. And for highlighter, I did decide to pick Mary Luminizer by The Balm. This is something I finished a mini of a few years ago and I repurchased a full size this year. I mean, it's a champagne highlighter. This is not something super unique, but I do love how finely milled it is, and this is pretty intense. So today I'm wearing this with a combination with Champagne Pop, which I still love Champagne Pop, by the way. I think that's a great highlighter as well. And again, I love so many different highlighters, but I love the Ofra ones and the Anastasia, but those are sometimes a little bit too intense for an everyday. This can be built up pretty intense, or you could wear it, you know, a bit more of like a medium intensity highlighter no glitters in it at all it's beautiful the last category is lip products i didn't wear that many lip products this year i didn't really go anywhere but i do have some favorites and i gotta say i fell in love with lip liner this year i was not a huge lip liner person until this year but these are definitely my two standout formulas i also do love the nyx ones and i really like the ones from beauty vault that i got in boxycharm um, but I would say probably my ultimate favorites are ColourPop. I have several of these. This is BFF. I've talked about this one a lot and I am wearing this one today. It's a warm neutral color. Really love it. These are very, very creamy and easy to apply. And then I fell in love with the Pat McGrath Labs lip liners. This is Contour. This is her most popular color. It's incredible. There is Contour, there is BFF. They're not that different. This one's maybe slightly dark. What stands out about the Pat McGrath formula is that they're a bit sticky and they're slightly drier than the ColourPop, but that makes them more long lasting. They are amazing. It's really, really good. I mean, these are expensive. They're $28, so you could get the ColourPop ones for like $7 or even the NYX ones are seven or $8. Are they really worth this high price tag? I did, I have two of them. I bought them when she had a 20% off sale earlier this year, and I've mentioned before, Pat McGrath has a lot of sales, so pretty much anything you would wanna buy from her website, I would recommend waiting for a sale. She has them a lot during different holidays. That I got in like her spring sale or something like that. So it's great, but the ColourPop lip liners are pretty fantastic. Lipstick. I don't know. I feel like I really didn't wear that much lipstick this year, except for the ones that I was project panning. But these are formulas I've mentioned many, many times, and I still love them. The Wet n Wild, these are the High Shine Liquid Cat Suits. I've tried the matte version of these. I think they're a little too drying. These are more like a pigmented lip gloss, honestly. This is the one in Send Nudes. Really like it, there it is. Warm neutral color, pretty much the same color as Contour and ColourPop BFF. I really like brownie neutral shades. I wear pink sometimes, but I'm more of a brown lipstick lover. And the Lux lipsticks by ColourPop. I still love this formula, it is amazing. I still really enjoy the MAC tube lipsticks and I really like the MAC liquid lipstick formula. I think they have one of the more comfortable formulas. But these Lux lipsticks by ColourPop, Oh my gosh, these colors all look the same. <laughs> Clearly, I have a theme. Um, this one has, I guess, a bit more pink to it, and I'm wearing this today with BFF and then a lip gloss that I'll show you. These are incredibly luxurious. I think these are around $7. It's a really comfortable, kind of like a satin formula, but they do have some matte ones as well. I like the satin ones a bit better. Really nice packaging great for the price definitely those have been favorites for a long time and last up is lip glosses and i've talked about these so much you're not going to be surprised 
the NYX Butter Glosses, and Pat McGrath. Now, I definitely have other lip glosses that I love, but these two formulas are top-notch, ultimate favorites. I've finished multiple tubes of these. They're great. The NYX ones, I have several of the Butter Glosses. This is the one called Strawberry Parfait. They have so many color options. They're only $5. It is taking me so much willpower not to go buy like 10 more of these. So this is more of a pink. Definitely you can build these up to get them to look more pigmented. So sometimes I would do wear them on their own, but often I layer them over lipsticks. Really nice formula. A lot of shine, which I love, but not too sticky. Very comfortable on the lips. And then Pat McGrath Labs. I think where these really excel is they are incredibly shiny. Like the shine is intense. This is what I'm wearing today. This is Bronze Divinity. I also bought several of her sets of minis. She sells mini sets, three mini lip glosses for $25. Full sizes are $28. And I have finished almost all of the minis that I bought earlier this year. It's an amazing formula. Very smooth on the lips. Not sticky at all. There is Bronze Divinity. This one does have a few shimmers in it. And I will say a lot of the Pat McGrath ones have some shimmers in them. Not all of them. Some are a cream finish, but they're really comfortable. You don't feel any grit and I love the shine. Like this is what I'm wearing today and it is so shiny. I absolutely love it. That is it for my 2020 favorites video. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for subscribing to my channel, watching my channel this year. I really, really appreciate it. My YouTube channel has been a huge distraction for me and basically what I've been doing in all of my free time. So thank you so much. I really, really appreciate your support. I really, really do. If you wanna see other videos, I will link some in the description box and some in the cards. As I mentioned, I've been uploading six videos a week in December. That is it. Thank you so much for watching. Please let us know your yearly favorites. I really wanna hear you guys' favorites. That is it. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.